Hi everybody, it's Steve the Anchor Tester and I've got an idea I want to bounce off everybody. In my most uh, recent test video, I think it was uh, video number 96, we saw that this 17 pound Mantis Anchor, uh, the roll bar bent back about 10 degrees. It was in soft mud and I was pulling on it with about 690 pounds of force. That's, that's a lot of force and for boats that would normally use this, that might be equivalent to a storm or maybe even a small hurricane. But uh, I personally, I want to keep testing this anchor with higher and higher force. I want to explore its, its maximum. And I do not want to keep bending the roll bar back. So the idea is to add this strap. You can see here it's nice and tight. Added one to the larger anchor as well. So here's the idea how it works. Uh, I've just, again, I've spliced this into a loop. And the way I did it is I tucked the one end into itself here and then I tucked that end into the other side. Um, the, the, the trick of course is how do you know how big to make this and I'll show you in a minute how I how I figured that out but first I'll just show you how to set it up. Um, of course this this wouldn't work if this roll bar wasn't removable uh, but what I do is I just cow hitched it to the tripping hole of the anchor first And make another cow hitch at the other end. Pass it through. And when you first do this, at this point, it's important that it's not flat here. You, you, you want the action of bolting this down to then create the tension. And like I say, it's hard to know how big, how big to make the strap uh, without some trial and error, and that's just what I did. So at this point, you just, you just tighten this down and it gets just tight as a drum. But now let's go back and I'll show you how I made this loop. Okay, with the roll bar bolted back on, I first cow hitch to the tripping hole and get this tail about to the position of the roll bar and then cow hitch this side this doesn't have to be exact at this point I make a mark at this other cow hitch so we've th that's gonna be our cut we're gonna cut there and then I also want to mark the two tails right in the middle So we should have uh, one mark at this end and two marks here. So these two marks go together and that's our cut line. Next it's good to taper the ends of these before we bury them into itself for the splice. So I just simply separate these individual strands down a couple inches and this is where my expertise is lacking. I don't know. There's, there's going to be a, a ratio. A certain number of uh, percent of this diameter should be in it, the, the, it should, should encompass that taper. But anyway, I gave it a couple inches. And then I just simply cut these off just a little shorter all the way on up so that we have a continuously tapering end. That's fine. This doesn't have to be pretty. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I believe there are tools available for this next operation, but I just like to use masking tape. See, it's impossible to tuck that in to the inside of itself without it just being a big frayed mess. So I just simply tape that tapered end into a best shape, best cone shape that I can. Same for the other side. Next I I assume that these marks are not correct because there was no tension previously. So I just this is a guess here. I just guess about an inch or two more and then just tuck one end in at the midpoint 
and I leave the tape on initially. Eventually that tape's going to come off, and it's, I'll show you how to do that. But to, while we're fit, trial and error fitting the size, we'll leave the tape on. And I, th I think the, the length of this berry is important for ultimate strength. If we, if we wanted to, to really maximize the strength here, there's a, there's a rule of thumb, and you can look it up. I could have looked it up, but I didn't. I, I kind of wanted this entire berry to be within this distance, which I think it's probably going to be fine. Helps to get one side bolted loose. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think that's that's probably right where we want to be. We'll go ahead and tighten it up. I think it's just a hair short, but I think I'll leave that one alone. I think as time goes by, you stress things, that might ease a little bit. So we've got quite a bit of preload on it. Good. Now I'll take it back apart and we'll get that tape out of the splice. Should have made a mark before I took the roll bar off, but it's a good point at, at this time to mark just where you want to be in case things move. So I've got I've got ink on both strands right where they kind of pass by each other. Ultimately, the best thing to do to keep these strands from from moving when it's loose is to either whip. Uh, whipping around it to sort of lock it or even stitch through and all that does is it just keeps these this thing from moving when it's not under load once this thing is under tension the splice is secure nothing will creep or move so this this stitching isn't required to take any of the ultimate load it's just to keep it from moving when there isn't load on the splice but in any event so I've got the R2 spots marked now I want to get this blue tape exposed. So I've just worked that end through a hole and then I've, I've pinched here where I don't want to move and just collapse it back a ways. And I've got plenty of room there to take the tape off. So once the tape's off, you just work that back in it disappears back inside itself and that splice is done, or that half is. It's important to get this right and where you want it because once you tighten it down it is really really difficult to position it. There we go, tight as a drum. Again, it's very low stretch. I cannot see this roll bar bending at any conceivable loads that you'd put on this anchor. I'd like to stress that I am not saying that Mantis anchors are not strong enough by, the, by adding this strap. I'm saying that I need this strap to continue with my ultimate holding power testing. It's very possible that most or maybe even all normal users of these anchors don't need this. Um, you're certainly welcome to try it if you want, but as again, I would wait until I, we complete some testing to make sure that this the, the presence of this strap doesn't somehow affect its performance. Um, speaking of performance, if you're not familiar with my testing or not familiar with these anchors, I believe the designers of these, they optimized this shape and this design for very high performance, and in many ways they achieved that. Uh, also, they I believe they wanted to make a product that was manufacturable at a reasonable cost, and it's true. These are uh, nicely priced anchors. So price, performance, very good. Ultimate strength? No, I don't think that that was their top priority. Is it strong enough? I think most of the time, absolutely. Is it strong enough for my testing? No, I can bend this one and this one at will. And when I get a higher power test boat, I may even be able to bend the 45 pound roll bar Mantis M1 anchor. So, 
we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe at some point, a good test will be to see how much power it takes or how much thrust it takes to bend a, a 45 pound mantis roll bar. Um, I kind of don't want to just ruin stuff. I, I, I like to keep things whole. You know, this is a good product. I don't want to modify it or damage it. If Mantis says, hey, go for it. We want to see how, how what it takes to bend that roll bar as well. And then they'll supply me with new roll bars if they're, if they're damaged beyond repair. Okay, fine, I'll do that. But in, in lieu of that, I'm going to try to protect these roll bars from the really high power that I intend to put on them. Okay, we have an anchor casualty. Uh, the roll bar has bent back under very, very high load. And we did bend the roll bar. Roll bar bent. <laughs> 